Well, while I wait for bearings to arrive, I'm going to work on the other airplane, the Emerald. I'm working on the uh, the panel, and uh, so I figured I'd film it and show you guys what else I'm doing. Hope you enjoy. Hi there. Um, okay, I'm I'm back again here in the hangar. Uh, only this time I'm going to be working on the other airplane, the Emerald. So this is an update on the Emerald. Here's the blank on the panel, the panel blank that I, uh, I've drilled out. And let me just explain briefly again in case some of you have forgotten. This is going to be holding the EFIS. That's the uh, GRT um, Sport EX EFIS. This is going to be holding the radio. Um, this will be the airspeed and altimeter. Okay, a magnetic compass will be mounted up behind the windshield. Um, master switch and um, and uh, a chart circuit switch, and then of course your panel switches for other items. You know, like the this, the fuel pump, the landing lights, and breakers across the bottom. Now. There's a lot of blank space here, and this space here is uh, just the right size for us to put a, uh, a Garmin uh, GPS. Um, oh, I forgot the model number. I'll put it down at the bottom of the screen which one it is we're looking at, uh, which will give this aircraft IFR capabilities for those of us who will be IFR rated. Uh, so that is reserved for the IFR. Um, the uh, GPS that's going here and this is of course reserved for one other if we want we can punch another hole in here for another uh, uh, for anything so um, what I'm doing right now is I'm going to be putting nut plates on these four corners for the ethos uh, rather than using the uh, the nuts and, and little locking uh, locking nuts in the back um, I'm going to put nut plates in here, and that way we can undo these four bolts, remove the EFIS, and not have to remove the whole panel and tilt it forward to get up nuts in the back side. So, um, yeah, that's, that's going to be done right now. <laughs> uh, we don't need to do it for the radio. The radio, you, uh, these uh, nuts screw directly into the frame of the radio. Uh, the airspeed and altimeter, we can get those rings that have the little nuts on it to put in behind if we want. Um, so we'll probably do that. Uh, but if we're going to be removing these devices here, you know, the airspeed and altimeter, we're probably going to take the whole panel down as well. Um, so, yeah, it's, uh, if, if that's coming out, that means we've got to disconnect the vacuum hole lines, or not the vacuum lines, the, uh, uh, the pedostatic uh, lines. So. Right now, I'm going to drill and mount these nut plates, and uh, I'll see if I can get you guys nice close-up shots of what I'm doing as well. So, thanks for following along, and remember, down there is a like button. Hit that like button. Makes these videos recommended more often. If you like what you see, subscribe, and definitely leave a comment saying hello from somewhere. I love it when people say hello from wherever they're from. Um, it's kind of lets me know that you know where people are watching this from and um, just say hello because hey we're all in this together so onward to the work okay after the intro uh, now I'm down to working so you'll see the other camera over there looking down I have two cameras might as well use them Our EFIS, Grand Rapids, Sport EX. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, fasten the nut plates on the back side, tighten this thing down, get it squared away, and then from the back side I'm going to uh, drill little starter holes on the nut plates, take this thing apart, and then finish drilling the holes. That's that's the game plan, anyways. Okay. Oh. Nuts that go with it. Right there. Okay. 
and the infamous warp speed. Yes, warp speed, Captain. <laughs> just so she's breaking up. Uh, all right, so I'm just going to quickly narrate this. Uh, I sped things up to like 16 times normal speed. Um, I am putting the EFIS onto the aluminum panel and I'm bolting it in place with the nut plates so that I can target the little holes that I need to drill in order to rivet the nut plates in place. So it's a bit of a process. You gotta put everything together. You gotta drill little holes or pilot holes to start with and then uh, take it all apart and finish drilling the holes and um, yeah it's it's a process but if you want to do it right it's it's going to take a bit of time and if you are going to be building your own panel uh, don't rush it take your time make sure everything is square and make sure everything fits look for clearances especially in behind that panel uh, where you're mounting it because last thing you want to do is drill a bunch of holes and mount a bunch of equipment and find out you don't have space behind it for what you put on the panel Anyways, uh, we're going to drop out of warp speed for a second, and I'll be right back. Okay. All right, so I uh, went to the drill press to uh, drill the holes, and now I'm just going to deburr on the back side, but on the front side, I'm going to use this deburring tool to countersink because I don't have the tiny little countersink for that. So, yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll be a minute. Actually, it's a lot more than a minute. Uh, this whole process it took me in total about six hours. Uh, there's a lot of editing going on over here, by the way. and um, But in total it was six hours. And um, uh, I'm trying to... Uh, uh, keep the hangar doors open as much as possible to bring daylight in. I found that these cameras don't really like the uh, the lighting, the fluorescent lighting in there. So, oh, we're out of warp speed for a second here, but that's only because I wanted to show you that, yes, I'm using a hand riveting tool to rivet these nut plates in place, and, um, and yeah, so I slowed it down because you kind of missed it in the warp speed at 16 times. So, um, brought in the second camera, and there you go squeeze the rivet and back to warp speed wow look at that <laughs> scotty would be so proud of that so um yeah it's it's just a, a slow steady tedious process of um, of getting everything all done and then of course i have to wash the panel with uh mek in order to take all the ink and glues off of it before i wrap it in carbon fiber which is what i'm doing right here so um yeah, I'm uh, I'm st stretching it out. Uh, well, actually, I rolled it out, measured it, and uh, now I'm peeling the backing off and uh, going to apply it to the front side of the panel. And it's really just that simple. Now, this is automotive uh, carbon fiber. It's meant to go on cars that go outside in the rain and whatnot, and through car washes and all that kind of stuff. So I figure it's durable enough for a panel and it makes it look real sexy so um yeah that's that's what's happening at this point is uh just me smoothing it out and uh making it nice and um yeah i'll stop the narration now because we're not in warp speed and it's gonna go it's in regular speed and i think i say something here i'm not sure we'll find out if not it'll be a whole long length of silence just hum a tune to yourself if you have to And cutting these holes, actually I'm going to move you so you can get a better view of this. Sorry for the shaky camera work. Essentially just a sharp knife, poke it in there and then ride along the, uh, the hole very gently. You're putting so little uh, pressure on here. You're, you're sliding 
the blade along the aluminum sawing it on there you don't want to you don't want to tear it at all you want a nice clean cut now I picked this one to show you because it's an oddball because it has that cutout for the altimeter a little bit what it looks like. Now what I need to do yet is I need to get uh, a black sharpie and paint the insides here because well uh, it's it's gonna it's gonna glint you're gonna see a little little hint of the aluminum I'm oh, just gonna trim a little more here it's not exactly right there we go Sorry about this, gentlemen and ladies, and and anybody else who's watching. There, that's better. Okay, so I'm ready to mount those instruments. Just got to poke the holes for the screw for the uh, nuts and so on. I'm going to open up the switches holes the same way, just by sawing it out, and the breaker holes, as you can see. There's a few on the back there. And uh, and then that will be finished, and I can start mounting it. Now I still have to drill the holes to mount this panel in the aircraft, but that can be done later. Right now, it's almost ready for me to finish mounting the instruments and start wiring it up. So there we go. Um, I won't bore you with me cutting with a knife. Um, maybe you do want me to bore you with cutting with a knife or all these things, but I think you pretty well get it. Sharp, sharp knife, carefully trimming around, and and it looks like carbon fiber. Looks like Mike Patey made it. Ha! Ah! <laughs> it's not a Mike Patey carbon fiber panel. It's a uh, Peter Toth uh, aluminum carbon fiber fake panel. But hey, it'll look good. That's really what matters there. So, okay, I'm going to close this off right now. Um, I'm not sure how this is going to turn out for editing, uh, or maybe I won't close this off right now. You know what? Uh, why don't I? Uh, why don't I go ahead and finish cutting these things out and start mounting some equipment, and I will come back in a few minutes. Actually, in your case, in a few microseconds, and uh, I'm going to show you what it looks like when the instruments are mounted. So, I shall be right back. Okay, there we go. Um, still have the switches and the breakers to put in. Oh, sorry about the radio chatter. There's a lot of guys doing touch and goes, uh, you know, getting their their uh, currency back after a uh, winter of, uh, of um, hibernation. So, anyways, just need to put the switches and the breakers in, and then wire everything up and um, get it ready for for the install. So. Yeah, um, I'm going to cut it here. Uh, I'm going to leave it at this point. This is the uh, panel for the Emerald, and um, it's uh, it's going to look real sexy. So um, yeah, it um, um, it's going together. So thanks for following along on this alternative update. Oh, hang on, radio clatter. Well, oh, okay. 
Uh, thanks for following along. Uh, remember to do the whole like you subscribe things and all that kind of stuff. And I will see you back here in the hangar again for another riveting and exciting update of Peter's working on airplanes. So, yeah. I guess that's what I did. See you later. Keep your stick on the ice. Bye-bye. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I, it... Uh, <laughs> It's a tough job to take all those hours and edit it down to like 15-20 minutes. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you again in the hangar. Bye-bye.